Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vedavati Purandare. I am a consultant physician and diabetologist at Chilaram Diabetes Institute. Chilaram Diabetes Institute has organized International Diabetes Summit 2019 on 8th, 9th and 10th of March. Today was the first day and we had a great workshop on management of diabetic neuropathy and diabetic foot in our IDS. There were good faculty members, speakers and moderators for the workshop. We had a session on clinical examination of diabetic foot in the workshop. We had a session on clinical examination of foot in the workshop. We all know that peripheral diabetic neuropathy and peripheral arterial disease, these are the two big enemies of foot in patients with diabetes. So, regular clinical examination in patients with diabetic foot, then the risk stratification and referral to specialist is very important to prevent further complications in patients who have diabetes and neuropathy and peripheral arterial disease associated with that. One minute time spent on clinical examination of foot might save one leg and it is said that examination of diabetic foot is equally important to examination of other systems including the examination of heart. Clinical examination of diabetic foot starts as soon as the patient enters our clinic. We have to see how patient is walking. We have to observe the gait of the patient. In normal subjects, the normal walking cycle will have stance phase and swing phase. But in patients who have diabetic neuropathy, these phases are lost and patients will walk with a stamping gait. While patient is walking inside the clinic, if patient has wound over the foot and he is walking with the limb, then we can say that patient might have mild neuropathy because the pain sensation is preserved and hence patient is walking with the limb. In spite of having wound on the foot, if patient is not walking with the limb, then the neuropathy could be severe because the pain sensation is not there. When patients have predominantly motor neuropathy, they walk with high stepage gait or also which is called as foot drop. So, gait examination is first step in diabetic foot examination. Second point is Please observe the footwear of patients because we have seen many patients who come to us with worn off and old footwear and they might be the reason uh, for non-healing ulcers or wounds over the patient's feet. The third important step is examination of foot with adequately exposed lower limbs in a good bright light. The next step is adequate examination of skin in which we see for dry and scaly skin we have to observe heels where we can see the cracks. If they are not taken care on time, it might lead to further infections. We have to also observe for the hair loss. In patients who have peripheral arterial disease, because of the signs of ischemia, the skin becomes shiny, there is hair loss, there is change in the skin color also. So, these things have to be taken care. Then we have to examine the nails thoroughly. In patients who have ischemia in the lower limbs, the nails could be brittle. And there could be fungal infection affecting the nails which is referred as onychomycosis. So, this examination is also important. We have to see the interdigital area which usually might have severe moisture and there could be interdigital tinea pedis which can be there and usually it is asymptomatic so patient may not notice it. So, we as doctors should specifically see the interdigital toe space, space area. Then coming to musculoskeletal deformities. For clinical convenience, foot is divided into forefoot, midfoot and hindfoot and clinic musculoskeletal deformities like claw toes, mallet toes, hammer toes, hallux valgus, they affect forefoot area. Sharko foot, it usually affects the midfoot area and the uh, deformities like calcaneal spur, they are seen in hindfoot area. These musculoskeletal abnormalities, if not treated on time, they might lead to ulcerations and non-healing wounds. So, they have to be examined and they have to be, uh, pa patients have to be educated how to take care of uh, their foot on time. Then comes the evaluation of blood circulation. Patients who have diabetes could uh, suffer from peripheral arterial disease wherein the blood supply to the lower limbs is hampered. So, we have to check capillary refilling time wherein we press on the toes and release it. The capillary refilling time is normally less than 2 seconds. That is the first test. Now, then is to palpate dorsaris pedis and the posterior tibial arteries which are there in the foot and see uh, whether the pulses are 
felt well or not and then comes the evaluation of diabetic neuropathy we in our clinics we can assess diabetic neuropathy by examining ankle reflexes then we can use vibration perception threshold uh, or biothesiometer then we can have proprioception examination we can use 10 gram monofilament to see whether the patient has lost protective sensations or not and small uh, nerve neuro uh, small uh, fiber neuropathy can be examined by using hot cold sensations uh, test and by pinprick sensations after clinical examination if we find that patient is having severe peripheral neuropathy or peripheral arterial disease we have to counsel patients that it is not like you have to be panicky about it because we get many patients come to us that doctor see I have got severe peripheral neuropathy now my nerves are absolutely not working and they are under tremendous pressure and anxiety. So we have to educate and counsel our patients with severe diabetic neuropathy and peripheral arterial disease that they should not become anxious about it, they should not become panicky but they have to take their uh, the care of feet as advised by their podiatrist and their podiatry team members. Apart from taking care of their feet, glucose control is also important in such patients. So they have to regularly take check their glucose levels and keep them in the target range. Thank you.